اکارڈنگ ٹو علامہ اقبال سینگ تیرے ضمیر پہ جب تک نہ ہو نزول کتاب اٹ شوڈ ڈائریکٹلی ڈسٹینڈ آن یور ہارٹ تیرے ضمیر پہ جب تک نہ ہو نزول کتاب گراہ کو شاہ نہ راضی اس نہ صاحب کشاف نائدر دی تفسیر تفسیر کبیر آف امام راضی ول بی ہیلپ فل ٹو یو نور دی گریٹ تفسیر آف امام زمخشری دی کشاف دیٹ ول بی ہیلپ فل ٹو یو نو ریڈ قرآن ڈائریکٹلی اینڈ ڈائیو ڈیپ ان ٹو دی میننگز آف قرآن ناٹ اے سپرفیشل اسٹڈی اینڈ دین Let me use a simile. The Ruh within you, the Ruh within you, which is of divine origin, it dances to the tune of Quran. Because the source of both is the same. Quran has come from Allah and our Ruh has come from Allah. So because the source is the same, this roof within you testifies, this is the word of God. And only not this conviction that this is the word of God, also you have a philosophical view of this word from Quran. Also you have an ethical, a moral guidance from Quran. Also, you have and deduce a political system, the best political system from Quran. Also, you deduce and infer the best and just economic order from Quran. And then also you will be able to deduce and infer the best family system, the best social system from Quran. So this Iman will have an intellectual dimension this iman will be with understanding just as prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was ordered by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to declare proclaim qul hadhihi sabili adu ila allah ala basiratin ana wa man ittaba'ani say this is my method this is the way which i am going but this i am doing with full understanding ala wajhil basirat ala basiratin ana i am not groping in darkness not only myself but also those who are following me they are following me with understanding appreciating the essence and then feeling that testimony in the heart You know what is the source of conviction? Let me give you an example. If you have never tasted sugar, and all people are telling you sugar is sweet, sugar is sweet, sugar is sweet, sugar is sweet, you may conclude it may be sweet because so many people are saying it is sweet. They don't have to deceive me. They don't get any benefit out of deceiving me. So maybe it is sweet. But when you have tasted, now you say it is sweet. So there is a hell of difference between maybe and is. Maybe sweet. But then you say it is sweet. This is actually When you are listing people, existence of God, existence of angels, the institution of Vahi, prophethood, books of God, and resurrection, and the day of judgment, and the hereafter, you may say, okay, this might be so. This condition has been described in Quran in one ayah. ان نظن اللہ ضنن وما نہن و بے مستقین وی ڈو فیل دیٹ دیز تھنگز آر ٹرو ڈو فیل ڈو فیل بٹ اٹ از اوور فیلنگ 
وی ڈونٹ ہیو دی کنوکشن وما نحن بمستیقنین وی ڈو تھنک او محمد وٹ ایور یو ار سیئنگ سیمز ٹو بی کریکٹ سیمز ٹو بی کریکٹ بٹ وی ڈونٹ ہیو دی یقین دی کنوکشن اینڈ ود آؤٹ دیٹ کنوکشن یو کین ڈو نتھنگ so this is when your roof testifies one is the attestation with tag and the other one is the attestation of your roof your spirit your heart that this is haq haza huwa al haq and it has come from the same source from which my roof has come then you get conviction So the first and foremost duty of every Muslim, because Islam starts from the plinth. There is no mention of Iman in the definition of Islam. Bone al-Islam or Aqams in the hadith from Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhumah. Islam is based on five pillars, five things. Shahadat ya la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammad rasulullah. The first is the verbal attestation. Here belief or certainty, it has not been mentioned. Shahada, external thing. And the kamis salate, wa itai zakai, wa sami ramadana, wa hadil baiti man istata ilayhi sabila. This is Islam. But Iman is something else. It is in the heart. That is why Quran addresses the Bedouins, those Bedouins. who after the victory of makkah now they joined the fold of islam quran says and gives us the picture in armies groups a delegation has come from that tribe to declare their allegiance to islam and then a declaration another representatives or a deputation has come from that tribe to declare their islam quran gives us that picture is aja nasullah wal fat wa raita an nas yadkhuluna fi din allah afwaja 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 but allah addresses those people قالت العراب آمنا کلم تو منو ولا کن کولو اسلم نا دیز بیڈ ونس آر کلیمنگ دے ہیو کم ٹو بلیو ٹیل دم او پروفٹ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم یو ہیو ناٹ ایٹ آل کم ٹو بلیو یو مے سی یو ہیو بیکم مسلم دیٹس آل ولما یت خل المان و فی کلو بیکم اینڈ ریئل فیتھ ریئل ایمان ہیز ناٹ ایز یٹ entered your hearts so this distinction between the muslim and mu'min must remain before you in a very long process of downfall we have come to think that these two things are synonymous one one who is a muslim is a mu'min no most of the muslims are muslims only because of the accident of birth because they were born of muslim parents they are muslim that's all and they testify the things which their parents have told them so it's a racial creed it's not iman so first duty of a muslim is to acquire to attain the real faith real iman ya ayyuhal ladina amanu aminu billahi wa rasulihi والكتاب الذي نزل على رسوله والكتاب الذي انزل من قبل اوه يو هو كليم تو بي مومنز هاف ريل فيث برنينج فيث ليفينج فيث ريتشينج ذا ليفل اوف كونفيكشن اون الله اكزيستنس اند اتريبيوتس اوف الله اون هيز ابوستل اور ميسنجر اند اون ذا بوك that he has revealed to his messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and on the book which was revealed before him so 
सो दिस इज फर्स्ट ड्यूटी ऑफ एवरी मुस्लिम नाउ ऑल दिस प्रिंथ एंड द फाउंडेशन अंडर नीथ फोर पिलर आर स्टैंडिंग दे आर दोर मोड्स ऑफ वर्शिप दे आर टू सपोर्ट द्री रूफ अब ऑफ दम दे गिव यू द स्ट्रेंथ These are a salah, a psalm, a zakah, a hajj. I need not go into any detail. These things are known. But now comes the first roof. What is the roof? Quran uses four definitions, four terms to denote this first roof. Number one, Islam. to surrender to submit as if there was a fight going on between you and god allah was saying this is correct and you were saying no i will do this the confrontation was going on and now you put down your sword you submit surrender this is islam the meaning of islam is to surrender then comes the second term itaah itaat we call in arabic it is itaah this is obedience with love ta hum kehte hain taan wa karhan so it should be taan with the pleasure of your heart and out of love for god then we use the third term taqwa taqwa to refrain from something and that is to refrain from breaking the divine laws to refrain from sins from disobedience crossing the hudud of allah these are the limits put by allah subhanahu wa taala or your freedom you can do this and this and this but not this so not to cross those limits which have been imposed by allah subhanahu wa taala but the sum total of these three terms is ibadah and that is why this is the term used by all the messengers of allah يا قوم عبد الله ما لكم من الله غيره والله او باي نيشن او باي بيبل بي سليفز تو الله عبد مين سليف يو كان نوت جيس ات اون ذا امبلوير امبلوي ريليشن شيب نو ا سيرفنت His time, duty, hours are fixed. After that, he is free. He is also a citizen of the state, equal to the citizenship that you enjoy. In the elections, he will have one vote; you will have one vote. You are equal. Also, if you employ someone for a particular job, as a cook, for example, you cannot ask him to go. and clean my toilet he will say no sir i didn't get this employment for this cause this purpose i'm your cook so limited limited obedience time wise and also job wise but who is abd who is gulam who is slave he has to obey 24 hours day and night he can't refuse he has to obey any command that you give him this is abd a total obedience total obedience to allah not partial obedience not the obedience limited to certain hours of the day no 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 even to the extent that the slaves of the past 
They were the property of the Aka, the master. He could kill his slave at any time, at his pleasure. And it was no crime for him. He was not accountable. Well, he was my slave, my property. Just like if you have a goat, you sacrifice it and then you eat its flesh. Nobody can ask you, why have you done it? The goat belonged to me. Who are you to ask me? In the same way, these slaves, you know, they were owned by the masters. And they could do anything to them. So, O oh mankind, behave as slaves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This has been the call of all the messengers of Allah. And this is the call of Quran and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know in Quran, first of all is Surah Al-Fatiha. It's a preamble so to say. And the essence of that prayer that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us, it's a prayer. First we are praising Allah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin. And then we are making a solemn pledge with him. We shall behave as slaves to you. And we shall need your help. We ask for your help for that purpose. Because to declare yourself a slave to Allah is easy. But to really behave as a slave to Allah is very difficult. As Iqbal says, چمی گویم مسلمانم بے لرزم کے دانم مشکلات لا الارا وین آئی سے آئی ایم مسلم آئی ایم سرنڈرڈ مائی سیلف ٹو دی ول آف گاڈ آئی ٹریمبل آئی ٹریمبل آئی شیور وتھ فیئر بیکاز آئی نو واٹ آر دی ڈفیکلٹیز ان دی وے آف بیہیونگ ایز اے سلیو ٹو اللہ سو دین وی آسک دی ریئل پریئر کمس ناؤ اہ دن سرات المستقیم Show us and guide us on the straight path. And now the whole of the Quran is a reply to this request of yours. Beginning with Surah Al-Baqarah. Alif Lam Meem, Zalik Al-Kitab Al-Aray Bafi. Hudal Lil Muttaqeen. This is the guidance. And then in first two rukus, three types of persons have been discussed. Because this surah was being revealed in the 13th year after the beginning of Wai. 12 long years had passed at Makkah. So now there were those peoples who accepted the guidance of God and Quran. And what were their signs? What was their behavior? ali And Talha and Zubair and Sayyid ibn Zayd and Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, go and see them. The embodiment of this Talim is already present before your eyes. But then there was the second category who refused to accept. And they were adamant. No amount of persuasion and dawah was effective on them. Abu Jahl was there, Abu Lahab was there, and most of the Makkah was there. So then now Quran describes, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاؤُنْ عَلَيْهِمْ آنزَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنزِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ But this is not for all the people, all mankind. No, these people to whom the message of Allah has been conveyed totally to the maximum. But out of their haughtiness or out of their dynastic positions, they refused. 
آل دو دیئر ہارٹس دے ایکسیپٹیڈ دس از دی ٹروتھ ناؤ فار سچ پیپل اللہ سیز ختم اللہ علا قلو بہم و علا سمہم و علا افسارہم نشابت ال و لہم عذاب العظیم ناؤ اللہ تعالیٰ ہے کٹ اے سیل آن دیئر ہارٹس اینڈ دیئر ایئرز اینڈ دیئر آئیز نو اماؤنٹ آف پریچنگ مور کنوئنگ مور ٹو دیم will be beneficial. They are not going to accept Islam. Then the third category now started at Medina. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ There's the third category who say with their tongues, we believe in Allah and Akhira, the hereafter, but they are not real moments. They are the munafiqs. This third element was only it started in Medina. It was not there in Mecca. And then you know Quran discusses what is the basic dawa, what is the basic call of Quran and Muhammad. Ya yuhanna sa'budu rabbakum al-lazhi khalaqakum wal-lazina min qablikum la'allakum tattakoon. O mankind, now note the difference. The previous messengers used to say, Ya Qawme, Ya Qawme, Ya Qawme, Oh my people, Oh my nation, Oh my tribe, Oh my countrymen. But here, no limits. Ya Yuhannas. Humanity at large is being addressed. Ya Yuhannas. Obadu Rabbakum al-Nazi khalaqakum. Behave as servants and slaves. With your Lord who has created you, and not only you, also those who are before you, so that you can be saved. You can be saved on the day of judgment from the fire of hell. So this is the first roof. Islam to surrender. Itah to obey. And forgive me, I didn't explain regarding it. Ah, it has to be total, not partial. Partial obedience is no obedience at all. Quran declares in the same Surah Al-Baqarah, "Afatoo minuna bi baazil kitabe wa takfuruna bi baas." Do you accept some of our commandments and rules given to you in our book? And you reject the other part of the commandments. فَمَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ يَفْلُ زَالِكَ مِنْكُمْ There can be no reward or punishment for those who take to this attitude, partial obedience. إِلَّا خِزْيٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Except extreme humiliation in this life of this world. And on the day of judgment, they will be thrown in the worst punishment. Most severe, severest punishment will meet you. So Islam, and Islam has also been total. You have to enter the fold of Islam in totality. All aspects of your life, individual as collective. Then itaat, it has to be total. Then taqwa, you have to avoid all, breaking all the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this goes on to make ibadah with one addition. Islam and itaat can also be forced on you. Some nation comes and conquers you, you have to obey them. But you are obeying them per force. Not from your hearts. Not out of love. But becoming a slave to Allah, it has to be out of extreme love for Him. Total obedience plus extreme love of Allah. They go to make ibadah. Ya qawme budu rabbakum. مَا لَكُمْ مِنِ اللَّهِ غَيْرُهُ 
But you have become a servant of Allah, a slave of Allah. You are obeying Him in all aspects of your life. Now the second roof is confronting you. To convey and preach the message of Allah to others. And here also you can find a number of terms. Quran uses tabligh, tabligh to reach out to somebody or some people to convey to them the message of Quran and Allah. Tabligh, you have to reach out. Dawa, call them towards the way of Allah. Now this is the two aspects of the same process. Reaching out and bringing them in the fold of ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Udru ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mu'izati al hasanati wa jadilu billati ahsan. Wa man ahsanu qawlam min man da'a ila Allahi wa amila salihin wa qala innani min al-muslimin. Tabligh. Even the Prophet was warned. Warned. Ya ayu rasiul. Balik maun zulai leka min rabbi. Fa illam tafal fa maa balak ta risalata. Oh my messenger. Convey everything that has been revealed to you from me. If supposedly. You concealed some of it. You have not performed your duty. You will be accountable on the day of judgment. So we find in Quran even the reprimands that came to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam from Allah. Ya ayu nabi, lema tohar mu maahul Allahu lak tab taqi mardat azwajik. Oh my prophet, why are you putting on yourself a ban to use something? which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared halal for you, permissible for you, only to get the pleasure of your wives? Is it not a reprimand? Abba sawa tawalla anjaahu al-a'ma wa ma yudhrika la'allahu yazzakka o yazzakka rufa tanfa'u zikra He frowned and turned away when a person approached him who was blind. This incident happened when Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum came and the Prophet was busy in conversation with some chiefs of the clans of Quraysh. So he didn't like, he is disturbing me. I am busy in something which is very important. Allah didn't like it. Abasa wa tawalla anjaahu al-a'ma wa ma yudrika la'allahu yazzakka wa yazzakkaru fa tanfa'u zikra What do you know? Maybe that he is a truth seeker. He will purify his soul by getting your teaching. He will have the reminding and remembrance of the truth. اَمَّا مَنْ اِسْتَغْنَا فَانْتَ لَهُ تَصَدَّى وَأَمَّا مَنْ جَاءَكَ يَسْعَى وَهُوَ يَكْشَى فَانْتَ عَنْهُ تَلَحَى Those who are not putting any attention to what you are saying, you are after them, after them, after them, giving your time to them. And those who are coming to you, the person who comes to you, and he wants guidance, you are not paying attention to him. This is in Quran. 
لیٹر آن ون ایور عبد اللہ ابن ام مکتوم کیم ٹو دی پروفٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم یوز ٹو سے مرحم بلزی آتا بن اللہ فی ویلکم ٹو دی پرسن ان ہوز کیس اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی ریپری مانڈیڈ می سو دی میسنجر آف اللہ ہیڈ ٹو پریچ اینڈ کنوے ایوری تھنگ دیٹ واز ریویل ٹو ہیم یا یو رسول بلغ ما انزل علیکم من ربک و ان لم تفعل فما بلغت رسالتك 